Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to talk about memoirs. So 2021 so far has been quite memoir heavy for me. Uh, when I say memoirs, I pretty much include autobiographies and personal essays. But I've been reading quite a few of that kind of genre this year, that kind of nonfiction this year, and I found some new favorites. Uh, and I wanted to take the time to gather some of the books that I've read of this type uh, today and recommend them to you. So these, some of these are books I've read this year, some of them are from previous years, some of them I've definitely talked about before. With all of these books, if I've written reviews for them, I will link that below as always. The book that I've read most recently and that is shaping up to be one of my top favorites of the year is The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy. This is the second in her Living Autobiography trilogy, I think, and um, I haven't re uh, talked about this before because I read it in August and so it will be in my August wrap-up. Uh, this is a lot about being a woman after her divorce, being, being a woman and what that means as separate from being a wife and being a mother. It is a lot about writing and having the space to write and create things. Uh, so she sort of taps into the a room of one's own themes. Um, there is a lot of writing on connection with other people and with um, with living uh, authentically I feel like. There's so much about this that I absolutely loved and as I said I will talk more about it in my August wrap up. Another book that I've also read in August that I will talk about in my next wrap up is Small Bodies of Water uh, by Nina Mingya Powells and this is a this is kind of a memoir told in essays, that is what I meant about <laughs> personal essays that, that gathered up feels like a memoir in the sense that you get very closely, um, you, you get the knowledge about the author through all of these various strands of thought. A lot of it is about the actual physical bodies of water, so uh, she talks about geography and the various places in the world that she connects her roots with, also just being in water. But there's also some of the things that she, she talks about in this book is something I've been missing from nature writing, which is um, a counteract, uh, a counter to the um, westernized view on nature and nature, nature observations and getting a different nationality or, or a different cultural lens on nature. Uh, there's that in this book as well. There's a lot of things. Um, because it's essays, it sort of touches on a lot of different experiences. Some of it is related to identity and family um, and language and food and friendship um, and work uh, and writing. Uh, so many things, but I really like this one. On a similar note, we have Turning. Uh, Lessons from Swimming Berlin's Lakes by Jessica G. Lee. I've read both of Jessica G. Lee's books this year, this one and um, Two Trees uh, in a Forest. Two Trees Make a Forest. This was probably my favorite out of the two. Uh, this one talks specifically about swimming, as you can tell, and one of the things that I thought it was really interesting for me to read both this and and um, Small Bodies of Water is that she, um, N Nina, Nina Mingya Powell's actually references Jessica J. Lee in this book specifically. Uh, and this one came out a few years ago so I thought that was really fitting that I'd read both of them this year. Um, this one again talks about similar themes to Small Bodies of Water in the sense of identity and home and having, um, being mixed race and having a lot of places that you connect your family and identity and belonging to. The way she talks about swimming especially is so beautiful. She talks a lot about the mental experience, like the the, the psychological experience of, of swimming and almost spiritual, bordering on the spiritual, which I thought was really interesting and something that has always drawn me to writing on swimming. That is definitely one of the central themes, that feeling of weightlessness, but also a feeling of connection in water, um, a feeling of healing as well. One of my favorite books from last year is Patchwork, uh, A Life Amongst Clothes by 
Claire Wilcox. I will insert the actual finished uh, photo of the cover here. This is again a collection of essays, but the essays themselves are fairly personal and intimate. The topic of the book is history um, of clothing. Most of the time she talks about the history of clothing and uh, fabrics um, from a personal perspective. So she will talk about uh, a linen that has some kind of memory attached to it. Uh, she will talk about a dress or a thread or um, whatever it is, some kind of material um, that has memories uh, connected to it and sort of the, the fabric and the material itself reminding her of um, these these fragments of memories and sometimes even just like flashes of memory. As she is going through her memories I was reminded of a lot of my own memories and so it sort of became a parallel exploration for me and because of that it was one of the most um, significant reading experiences I had last year and I haven't stopped thinking about it. On a similar note, a book I read I think the year before and that also had a very big impact on me and that I couldn't stop thinking about since I read it and still think about is The Collective Schizophrenia by Esme Wayne and Wang. Again, a collection of essays and they talk about the author's experience with uh, schizophrenia and with mental illness in a more broad way. Some of them talk about mental illness as in, a, in the wider context of society and of history and how it's been uh, treated, how it's been diagnosed, some of the misconceptions around schizophrenia specifically, some of the problematic representations in media and things like that, but also a lot of this is in regard to her own personal experiences and own thoughts about these things. An older favorite that is the only book written by a male author in this pile, I think, is um, Autobiography by A. Milne. It's also called It's Too Late Now, I think. It follows chronolo chronologically his childhood and upbringing up to the point of him becoming a published writer. I think it goes up to his 20s or 30s. Um, and a lot of the nostalgia that you find in the Winnie the Pooh stories, um, the sense of of a child's mind uh, and innocence, but also some of the darker sides to childhood, is all captured in his writing on his own life. Uh, some of it is about his relationship with his brothers uh, and his, his parents. Some of it is related to his interest in writing. And um, I think you get a lot of the background con context to him becoming a writer of the Winnie the Pooh stories. Um, but you also get a kind of portrait of the times and I love A. Milne's writing, the sharpness sometimes to his writing and wit that I found, um, that I find amusing but also um, comforting and, uh, and, and yeah, I, I love him as a writer. This is my favorite thing I've read of him so far. Another book that we have on mental illness, this one I read in the same year as The Collective Schizophrenia is because I read that one. And this is The Center Cannot Hold by um, Ellen R. Sachs, My Journey Through Madness. One of the things that I remember specifically loving about this is the experience of someone with mental illness going through education. Uh, and some of the challenges that she faced in that very particular context of, of trying to get through her um, studies and struggling to, to maintain um, a kind of um, routine of, of the everyday. She talks about that but she also talks about the way that her mental illness in some ways guided her choices of, um, of her occupation so she became, um, she studied psychology and continued in that route and talked a lot about the rights of someone with mental illness which I feel like is such an important aspect to the experience of mental illness, the, the lack of rights often in many uh, contexts and the issues with that and because she's coming from both uh, the academic background on the topic as well as personal experiences it's just a perfect blend of the things and I feel like it raises a lot of important questions regarding as I said the rights of someone with mental illness to decide on their own lives. Another uh, essay collection uh, that I read a few years ago I 
think. I uh, can't even remember which year I read this, but this is I Am, I Am, I Am, A Seventeen Brushes with Death by Maggie O'Farrell. Um, as the as subtitle says, it is about near-death experiences. Some of them are not very near to death, but they are more about the possibility of death in a particular context. I loved how she writes about how she considers death and how it shapes her view on life. She talks about motherhood and one of the things that I remember specifically very was very striking to me was about how she talks about her daughter's allergies. If I'm remembering correctly, she was uh, allergic to uh, peanuts and or she had a very uh, very serious allergy anyway and that shaped a lot of the a lot of her fears uh, of being a mother. Another particular moment I remember strongly is about uh, a near drowning incident uh, and because I love writing on swimming that was an interesting perspective to get which is something that doesn't come up as frequently as you would expect. The last one I want to talk about here is Waterfalls of Stars My 10 Years on the Island of Skoma by Roseanne Alexander. I absolutely love this and if you are at all someone who likes nature writing you need to read this. Uh, it is about living on this island for 10 years so she talks about the observations she makes of the flora and fauna on the island. There's some magpies around the bird feeder, that's the sound in the background by the way. Because she works as a warden of the island during the, these 10 years she uh, observes the nature around her, the flora and fauna and all of the seasons throughout the years. Um, so there's a lot of that observation and obviously if you like nature writing you will appreciate that aspect of it. She has an eye for detail and a way of writing these observations that just comes to life. But also she considers living in this isolated way, um, her feelings of anxiety when she goes back to the mainland. Um, she talks a lot about her life growing up in this island because on this island because when she moved there uh, it was I think immediately after finishing university and so a lot of her important years of growth happened on this island and trying to transition again from, to the mainland was uh, was something that uh, loomed over her in the last uh, months of the time they spent on this island. So she lived there together with her husband. Um, I think this is one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. Uh, so as I said, if you're at all interested in nature as a topic for memoirs, then I uh, would strongly, warmly recommend this book. So those are all of the books that I wanted to talk about specifically in this video of memoirs that I have really loved and that I would recommend to you. Uh, as I said, they are not all of the ones that I loved. Uh, some of them I don't have on my shelves, so I will probably do a part two in the future. Um, but yeah, I would love to know if you have read any of these books. Let's chat about them in the comments. Do you have any recommendations for me with similar type books? Uh, I would love to know about that as always. I hope you're doing well and you're taking care of yourselves and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!